Hey guys, welcome to another short video <coughs> and this is on how to change the sensitivity of a status smoke detector but it probably will work with other smoke detectors but I'm not too sure depends what year they're made but yeah, also a quick side note do not do this to any smoke detectors that are in your house that are working for instance the ones on the ceilings because uh, they they're the ones that need to alert you in case of a fire and if they don't if you do start taking them apart and messing with the sensitivity well you could break the detector and also if there's a fire it won't alert you but if you're like me and you've just bought a random one from a cheapo shop and you're curious to know how to mess around with stuff in it then it's okay because you're not using it properly which I guess is good and bad so yeah, here it is. There's the uh, optical chamber, because this is an optical one, so it should be safe. Do not do this with an ionisation one, even though ionisations are okay. Still not, still don't do that. Anyway, so there's the uh, LED, just saw it blink then. LED, well, the um, test button. Horn, well, the horn bits, but the um, horn is on the... Um, well, I took the horn out anyway, and it's, all, and it's also on the um, top casing bit, which is somewhere else. Uh, so then you see this blue dial thing here. Well, that's how you change the sensitivity. And as you can see, it's sort of mid here. So I've got my screwdriver. Let me just pop that in. Right, so if you, once it's in, if you twist it anti clockwise, it reduces the sensitivity. Clockwise. Uh, makes it more sensitive but the only problem is because this has been contaminated with because I've been testing it with deodorant and stuff which you shouldn't really do but it's only a test one it's not like it's on the main system as you can see it's activated because it's too mucky in there and even though I've cleaned it out so yeah let me just so yeah let me repeat that anti-clockwise to make it less sensitive and I'm just going to override that if it let me hold on there we go and then yeah clockwise to of course make it more sensitive the problem is the more sensitive it is the more prone to false alarms it is so that's why I would normally keep it sort of halfway in between the two well, let me zoom and see it's activated again Especially if this is in, so say this is in like a, ooh, where should, what should I say? Let's say it's in a, an area where it's prone to dust. I would definitely leave it on a lower setting, but if it's in like a normal room, then it should be fine. There we go. Just override that. Should work. Might not, though. Hmm. What I, what I normally do is I normally just put the thing, twist it all the way to zero sensitivity, LED turn, LED stops blinking. Then of course I will just twist it, oh, come on focus, twist it back to normal. There we go, twist it back to normal. Or not, uh, it's gone off again. Luckily there's no beeping involved. That's probably why I took it out, actually, because it's too noisy. Come on, reset. One last fellas, just press the um, test button. That normally stops it or overrides it. And then just pop it into the halfway point, and there you go. So yeah, that's how to uh, mess around with the air uh, sensitivity on the uh, detector. My power, my phone battery's going and it's just activated again, so I'm just going to put on the zero sensitivity, or lowest sensitivity. But that's pretty much it, so thanks for watching, please comment, like and subscribe.